I gotta tell you, I just impressed one of my guests backstage. Uh, maybe he'll admit it, but uh, remind me to get to that, will you? On Saturday night, my first guest tonight um, became the youngest heavyweight boxing champion in history. And we are about to see, should anyone have missed it, the final moments uh, of that fight. So, <laughs> why do we wait? No, I, you think we're gonna show the tape. We're gonna reenact them. Uh, Mr. Tyson, by the way, will be the gentleman on the left who is doing the striking. Will you welcome the World Boxing Council Heavyweight Champion, Mike Tyson. Ah, uh, thank you so much. <laughs> the gentleman on the left in this case is the same gentleman on the left in the tape. Uh, well, are you ready to apologize to Trevor? <laughs> I got it. I have to know, what does it feel like to knock someone that hard? Or, in fact, to knock a man out? Is it a pleasure? Is it a thrill? Is it a charge? Or do you think, this isn't very nice? No, um, would you believe, Dick, to accomplish something like that, I'm, I'm really, I think, wow, I got the job done. Oh, everything that I've been training years to do, I accomplished it in that fight. I said, That's well, what it's all about. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was certainly, certainly impressive. Um, I, this sounds dumb, I guess, but was that a hard fight for you? Um, psychologically, it was. Psychologically? Yeah, because um, going to the fight, I trained six weeks uh -huh. for the fight in a strange area, Las Vegas. I only fought there once, and it was just a lot of um, altitude, and it was just unbelie unbelievable hype in the full fight. And yeah. being um, young, it, it was, wasn't really making me overwhelmed or anything. It was just something different. I never, never had the experience of not being able to go out my room and walk in the streets while people are going all crazy over you. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I know, it's taken me years to get used to that. <laughs> well, <laughs> but did you say you were affected by the altitude in Vegas? You could feel that? No, I was up there for six weeks. Six, yeah, to but get over when you're, But when you're fighting and you're going through a great thing and the magnitude is so intense like it was in that fight. Yeah. You know, your mind starts to play games with you. Yeah. But I'm sure I was confident. I knew no man in the world could beat me. But you still, you always have those doubts. No man in the world could beat you. No. <laughs> I, are, you <laughs> there. are you hurt anywhere? Seriously? No, not you, at Do you all. feel anything? No. No pain? No. Yeah. You know, when I, the punch looked like, from the angle that was on, uh, at, like it was right on the temple, was it in fact on the forehead or was it on the side of the... Well, it was... And you, you're correct, it was about right at the temple, right on the borderline. That's what I thought. Now, you've talked about key points. I think, did Customato teach you that sort of thing? Yeah, he taught me. He, he, was, he was almost what you could call a master of the anatomy. He knew, he knew every vital spot to punch. Yeah, almost, uh, almost in the sense of acupressure points or something. He seemed to know just <laughs> what, what, places to, what places to hit. Is this the championship belt, or is that your watch? No, I, I this is a bracelet, because ah. I'm religious and I keep it with me. Yeah. But, um, I wouldn't wear that in a tough neighborhood if I were no. you. <laughs> you, never, you never know when it's going to come down. Do you have any kind of nerves, butterflies, or fear when you go into a ring? You know, um, yeah, all the time. Everyone always yeah. asks me that. Yeah, but, but I can't believe that you didn't seem like you would. No. Um, the fear that I get from fighting, I use that as my friend to project it on my foe. Is that part of D'Amato's teaching also? That you Most direct definitely, yeah. that fear toward the other man? Yes, because like once he told me, fear is like fire, it's mm -hmm. a feeling. And if you let it get out of control, it could kill you and everything around you. And once you control it, you could use it to help you. And in fighting, that's what I do. I don't become emotional because it inhibits my performance. And I used to keep my fear as my friend and it makes me explosive. 
That's very good psychology, because when you feel the fear, then you, you can think of it as an ally and not as, a, as an enemy. If it ever comes a time I stop becoming afraid to fight, I'll feel the nervousness I wouldn't fight anymore. That would be the time you'd call it yeah. quits. What, what about the, the really unfunny subject of the possible injury? Do you have friends who say, get in and get out? You don't want to end up on Queer Street? Well, um, I think I'm too good to get hurt. Yeah. yeah, I really do. I believe I'll never get hurt in boxing. I'd argue that with you, but I won't. <laughs> For some reason. Can you explain to me why? We you always think, uh oh, the, you know, a layman watching a fight would say, that guy's a lot taller than the other guy. Uh, that's not fair. A fighter should be the same size and so forth. Can you show me why not being as tall as the other guy can be an advantage? Well, um, like I said before, it's all psychological. If you believe, that a guy, everyone always say this guy has an advantage, a seven inch reach advantage, four inch height advantage. No one ever says he has a four inch height disadvantage. Well, let's stand for Come a second, on. we'll see. Yeah. Just, I think a verbal explanation would be just as good as, <laughs> as the other kind. But... Just, just put your hands on. Yeah, okay, so just. Okay, so you're, you're what, 5'7", um, seven, right? 5'7", five, seven. I'm 6'2", yeah. it's the cameras. <laughs> Bend my legs? Yeah. Okay. And I'm a much taller guy. Right. To now. You, I'm more adjusted to throwing my punch like this. I just, ah, and then I have right. to, if you're calm and so relaxed enough, adjust. if you're calm and relaxed enough, you can watch and you can see everything. And uh -huh. you can watch every twitch of his muscles. But you have to have the confidence and the relaxation. Where, where do you direct your vision? Do you look the guy in the eye? Yeah, do you try to keep right the here. whole look form? Right here because his face can't hit me. So I only watch right here. I watch his face. Right. I know I've learned some things about martial arts that in some ways the idea is to look a little somebody, beyond somebody the opponent. Somebody was telling me that you're into karate. Uh, not so much karate as a, Aikido, okay. yeah. I'll show you what I did to Piscopo. It won't oh, work with no, you, but... No, huh? <laughs> no, come on, you said you have no fear. No. Can you just hold my wrists? Now, with us... Dick. Dick, ho hold Dick. it real tight now. Do no, I won't do anything foolish. Because okay. you're... I, I know you're worth a lot of money. I've taken a lot of criticism for this. Okay. The, the, right on the wrist, where it's where I have the... Yeah, good. Now, a, a really strong guy holding me like that... Don't be upset. Don't do it. No, it won't, no, it won't hurt. I won't be embarrassed if nothing. But if you just hold me down like that, okay. and this is something you illustrated, if I don't think of the place you're holding me... I'm trying to pull up now, and you're holding me down. Really hold me down. Okay. Good. What are you, a panty waist? Hold me down. <laughs> <laughs> now, obviously, I can't move, and no human being could. But the 87-year-old founder of Aikido, with the world's strongest man holding him like this, you got me? Yeah. You do, tell the truth, because yeah. people believe in you, you're a role model. The, old, <laughs> the founder of Aikido at 87, being held this way, could do that. Legit? Yeah, all right, but what Duke, is... Duke, hold tight. Oh, now you're playing for real. No. Hey -ya! <laughs> but, Isn't that remarkable? All right, but what is the purpose? No one's, if somebody's gonna monkey, nobody's gonna go like this. <laughs> oh, yeah? Wait. Now, he, wait a minute. He, he, raised, he raised an interesting point. If someone's going to mug you, they don't generally go like that. But if they do, you can do like that. We will, we'll be back right after this. <laughs>